Hi everyone, I'm Mike. This is the Sunday Art Show and this week I've got a bit of a weird painting for you. So I'm down at Budley Salton Beach working, crouching down on the pebbles. I've got my little field easel there and this is the view I'm going to be painting. Now I've painted this view before on the channel but I'm going to take a very different approach to what I did before. So last time I used acrylic. This time I'm going to use watercolour and then I'm going to add some animals in for a surreal touch and you'll kind of see that bit later in the video. So this is A2 mixed media paper and I've taped with masking tape along the, uh, the edges of the paper as we often do with watercolour just to kind of hold everything in place. And I'm putting in just a nice clean very simple wash of ultramarine blue here with a large round synthetic mop brush. I put in a light pencil drawing of uh, some of the distant landscape. You can still see on the left hand side of the screen some of the, hip, uh, some of the houses on the cliff top there and I'm just working around those at the moment with kind of a deeper blue, bluey green kind of wash. Just keeping the brushwork nice and loose to give me kind of a random edge to all of that foliage and all of those trees up on the cliff top and I'm being reasonably careful as I work around the silhouettes of the houses of the rooftops as you can see here but you know it's not a big deal if that wash kind of wanders in across the house a little bit. Now one of the reasons for coming to Budley Salton this was filmed back in August of 2020 uh, is that you know it's a particularly quiet day for, for whatever reason I don't remember quite why it was so so quiet I think you know it must have been middle of the week I think but um, the pebbles mean it's really easy to social distance so some of the, the the sandier beaches in the area even though they're quite local to where we live it can get really really busy and you know, to the extent that you're almost sort of bumping shoulders with people on it on a very hot sunny day but Budley Salterton I think in part because of the pebbles and because it's a little bit off the beaten track um, it's just generally quieter and calmer so even on the busiest of days you can kind of just keep a little bit of social distance going and, and you know keep everybody safe so and of course it's a beautiful spot as well so that, that's good. So continuing with this uh, kind of a rough and tumble uh, patch of colour that I'm putting in here just pop that pebble on the bottom of the field easel just because the the sea breeze was beginning to to move the pad of paper So what I want to do here is create a surreal seascape and the way I'm going about doing that is um, I'm not worrying about matching the colours too closely in terms of what's really out there and in, compared to what I'm painting. And I'm also trying to stay really loose with the brushwork to see what kind of interesting effects I can get. And of course watercolour is great for that because lots of things happen automatically. But as you can see I've defined two or three of those houses on the far right hand edge of the painting now a little better put a little bit of plant life in front of those as well and in between them and now what I'm going to do is come back in with a rather different style of brush stroke to kind of just very loosely capture some of the foliage which kind of grows up the, the side of the cliff there so this is much more of a uh, you know, closer to a green colour than the bluey green I was using before and there's a little bit of a coastal cliff edge path which goes up the hill there and I've just kind of indicated that by leaving a gap in that wash and now I'm moving up higher on the cliff so the cliffs here are quite distinctive as I've mentioned in previous videos they're bright red in colour that's the colour of the rock but then on top you've got gr bright green plants kind of growing their way down the cliff as I'm putting in there and uh, it really does make for you know a striking colour combination when you see it in real life. A few little touches of that same colour here and there and starting to pick out the silhouette of the cliff as well. My little water pot there as you can see is kind of surrounded by a little barrier of pebbles to stop it falling over. It keeps it nice and stable and I've just cleaned my brush so what I'm doing now is just lifting out some of that initial wash that I put down. So this is going to help create, you know, perhaps we're looking through some sea mist 
or some low cloud, that kind of illusion. So very much interested in capturing a range of textures in this painting. You can see I'm being quite rapid and not messing around too much really with my brushwork. So I just want to be bold and capture the scene in a loose and gestural way. And, you know, just, and see what I can create without getting too tangled up by reality. Coming in with a smaller round brush now and just scumbling away some of that initial wash that I put, that I put down just to light in certain areas. And the good old paper towel as well is great for lifting off paint in general, but watercolour in particular. Now, the, you know, the convention says that the more distant things are, if you want to create that illusion of distance, then generally you want them to, things to be paler and bluer. Okay? And generally speaking, bold, red, warm colours are going to pull things to the foreground. But the cliffs in this particular case are quite strongly backlit, so they are in quite deep shadow. And although they are off in the distance, they're not, you know, kind of a million miles away, they're not you know, off in the far, far distance. So I'm kind of breaking with convention here, and it's a little bit difficult to see the colour on, on camera at this particular angle, but you, you'll see later on in the video, it's kind of a dark purpley red I'm putting in here. So there's a little bit of blue in there because, you know, uh, obviously you can't have a purpley colour without some blue, but it's far redder and far darker than convention would dictate. But again, I'm trying to play with, you know, play against convention in this painting. So I'm going to be doing some weird things. And again, just creating some automatic texture with the brush rather than trying to draw or paint every little nook and cranny of the rock face. I'm just creating some random texture with brush strokes that I think are going to work. You can see I'm just spraying the painting with the water bottle there. That keeps the paint from drying out too quickly, but it also creates little drying marks from the droplets, and some of those I'll leave in on the finished painting. But coming back in now with a thicker mix of paint and a, and a, a warmer red, to go over that still wet layer for the for the nearer cliff face. Again, another spray with the water bottle. And once again, this time with a smaller brush, lifting off some of that colour with the clean brush. So Whenever, you know, whenever I'm painting, there's always this kind of um, this slight tension, this back and forth between what I've intended to put down, what actually happened, and then am I going to keep it or am I going to adjust it? And if I adjust it, like I'm doing now with a, with a wet brush, I'm just dragging things around, moving things with my finger. Am I going to do that precisely or loosely? Um, so there's this constant iterative process to experiment and see what, you know, what, can, what will happen if I just let the paint do its own thing to a certain extent to a certain extent and with watercolor that's very very much the case you know you, you simply can't control it in the way that you can with acrylic and so I feel you know part of the great joy of watercolor is to just let it do its own thing and see what happens
So now just continuing to work on the cliff tops and just moving the paint around. So I've put in, put in some warmer greens here. So apologies that, you know, because of the filming angle, when the paint is wet, getting quite a lot of uh, reflected light off of the, off of the wet paint there. Um, as, as I move down the paper, you'll be able to see much, much more. And then for the latter part of the video, I'll be back at home. So the lighting is you know, much improved. Um, just one of, the, one of the dangers of working outside, unfortunately. But I just wanted to share with you not only the creation of the painting, but just my day at the beach as well, you know, because I think there is something special about just being sat on the pebbles and working away. Anyway, so the cliff aspect is more or less complete. And what I'm doing now is coming in with a uh, flat brush and just putting some of the water. I've already put some dry brush marks in to indicate the distant shoreline. And again, Oh, sorry, I've, the flat brush I used for the, the dry brush marks for the distant shoreline. I've switched back to my big round brush now. Uh, this is a stronger mix of just the ultramarine blue at the moment. I used a light mix of that for the sky, very dilute for the sky. Slightly stronger, but still a, you know, a very fluid wash for the water. And I'm moving the brush quickly here to pick up some of the texture of the painting, especially as I go further off into the distance. Um, just spraying the foreground with the water bo bottle as well to create some texture. But what I'm just doing right now with the, with the brush is by moving it quickly, the brush skips across the surface of the painting and leaves some exposed white paper. And that's a nice way to automatically create some highlights in the water rather than having to fiddle too much. So I've let that dry and then I'm coming in again now with a darker blue once again. This time with a little bit of neutral tint in there. And again, I'm moving the brush quickly so as not to get too fiddly. And, you know, water is constantly moving, especially if you're at the beach. So it can be very easy to get tangled up in trying to recreate each ripple and wave. So what I've done is just squinted at the, the view and try to pick out the main areas of light and dark and then let the paint do the rest for me. Same kind of idea with pebbles. You know, there's no way you can draw every pebble on the beach, obviously. So I'm just looking at general patches of colour. So, for example, the, the dark area I've put, in, I've put in there, which is neutral tint and burnt umber, just left a little gap of white between that and the water. And there was a dark line of pebbles, where I guess where the pebbles are wet, where the water's lapped in. Um, just at the water's edge there. So I'm thinking more about perspective and big shapes of colour and tone. The other problem you've got obviously working outdoors is that, you know, as you can see, the lighting conditions are changing really quite rapidly over, the, over a matter of just a few minutes. And that's typical of sort of coastal conditions in the southwest of England. Um, so this colour on camera at the moment looks really quite dirty grey, but it's actually a light green that I'm putting down there. Um, and I'm using that to sort of mimic some of the distant grass and stuff, but also just the edge of the beach. But now coming in with a, uh, a darker purple, you know, mostly alizarin crimson, and then a spray of the water bottle allows those two colours to automatically mix together. And, you know, those textures, you can't, ju you can't replicate them any other way. You know, I, I wouldn't be able to do the same thing exactly again. You just have to let the water do its own thing. And I've got the paper propped up at a steep angle, coming with a warmer orangey brown now. Again, just bold perspective lines really is what I'm creating here. Keeping in mind the general structure, the stepped structure of the beach, but just trying to put in a colour which I think is going to complement what is going on in the background. And with that in mind, you remember I was talking about faint, light, bluey colours for the, for the distance. Well, these colours for the foreground are warmer, yeah, but funny. just in the I same way. Just in the same way as I've used a darker colour for the cliff and gone against convention, I'm using lighter colours for the foreground, which is also against convention. Normally we use darker colours for the foreground, but I'm just going to kind of trust that the stuff I'm going to put in later is going to help create a sense of depth beyond what I do in the seascape. So you can see I'm just letting these wa very loose washes do their own thing, run down and um, 
you know, I'm just putting in a few lines with my thumbnail there, just, you know, seeing if that has an effect. So I, I let it run down, I play with the brush, I put on the, uh, the water spray. And now with my small round brush, just filling in some kind of pastel colours on some of these houses, just to kind of make them pop a little bit against the rough and tumble, scumbled background that surrounds them. So it's just a little bit of drawing going on here, indication of a few windows and shadows, the lines of the odd roof. And the, the colours are looking really quite dull here because of the, the outdoor lighting, but um, what you'll see in a bit is that these colours are really quite vibrant and uh, you know really quite cheery, I, I would say, apart from perhaps the, the kind of dark and ominous cliff in the distance. But all of that, I'm hoping, is going to help the surreal effect, which I'm going to get to later. So just a little flat brush here to put in the windows, just dragging the brush horizontally. I'm not drawing a rectangle. I'm using the shape of the brush to create that window shape. But now back to a little filbert, but again, just little touches, little marks to create the effects of windows. So I'm just putting in a little block of colour to sum up the window in one go, rather than paint every little pane of glass. Now the distant shoreline here, I just needed to fix that a little bit because I didn't have it quite horizontal. So that's what I'm doing there with a the small round brush. And then just blending in the bottom edge of that cliff with the shoreline that I just that I just drew in a second ago. Just adding a darker line next to the shore, just to distinguish this foreground area from the more distant water's edge. And then with my flat brush, just add, just teasing out that line I put in so that it's, it's not just a simple line with a hard edge either side. There's a definite edge on the left, but not so much on the right. And then I'm also breaking that line up as well in places to make it just look more random and more created by nature, I guess. Now the paint I just put down there I felt was really rather too heavy so one of the things with watercolour is to, I think is to work you know quickly so rather than just try and remove it by wiping it off I'm using the water bottle and gravity to, to automatically create a texture so and that texture is in keeping with some of the stuff I did earlier doing something similar on the right here as well So it's a really nice way to work, I think, to just very, very quickly create these weird and wonderful effects, which are difficult to do. In, 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 it's not, is it? No, it's beautiful. It's always beautiful. In, and it's changed. In any other way. No, I, I don't know if you could just hear on camera there. I was just saying, you know, we were just saying how beautiful it is here and how the, the lighting conditions and everything change so quickly. OK, so you can see I've created the scene there. Well, I've got this rather weird, 
very colourful, somewhat surreal watercolour landscape now of Budley Salterton Beach. And I've removed the tape from uh, the edges of the paper. And, you know, that gives you the familiar white border that we often see around watercolour paintings. But what I want to do now is bring in three belted Galloway cows. So this is kind of the surreal bit. Um, so my plan is to make the cow in the foreground here kind of be peeking in from the right hand side. And the body of that cow, or it's a steer actually, is, is going to be kind of a little bit beyond the edge of the painting here. So that's another aspect of the surreal part, um, you know, that this animal is kind of beyond the edge of the actual image. And I've used that idea before with some belted Galloway cattle up, up in the clouds. So let me start out. I'm going to use some of these uh, watercolour markers that I haven't actually used before. These are, uh, these are by Spectrum Noir. And I've got one which is called Peacock Blue here somewhere. So I'm going to actually start my line drawing with that. Now the reference I'm using here isn't actually of a belted Galloway steer, but um, the angle at which I filmed this particular animal is kind of perfect because on the day I painted this um, this seascape or this beach scene, as, as you have seen earlier in the video, I was basically crouching down at a very low vantage point. So I was basically sitting on the pebbles, essentially. And the reference I'm using here is of uh, a, a red steer. I don't know whether it's a ruby red or what, what the breed is. But um, once again, I happened to film these animals while it was kind of crouched down by the edge of the field. So it kind of lends itself, the reference lends itself in terms of perspective and kind of angle to this particular painting. And what I'm going to do is do a little bit of uh, artistic modification and uh, just convert this animal into a belted galloway in a little bit. So we've got the outline of a head here. And uh, I think I could probably do, having put the kind of line of the back and the neck in, I could probably do with making the head a little bit bigger. And as I do that, what I'll do is I'll just kind of, so belted Galloways often have fairly kind of fluffy ears. Um, so let's add a little extra, a little extra fluff to the ears there. And then I can make um, make the nose a little larger down here, or make the head a little longer. And then the the next kind of coming in, or the, the lower part of the next coming in there. And then we've got a one of the front legs coming down here, and then the knee. And unfortunately, in my reference, my the the hoof is kind of obscured a little bit by the by the fence post. But you know, we can we can do an approximation of the foot. And then something isn't quite right with my drawing and I can't quite see what it is at the moment. Um, let's have a look. So I've got the head here. That's fairly reasonable. That's not too bad. Oh, maybe it's not. I don't know. Maybe it's OK. So the, the width, yeah, no, I've... I think it's just an odd angle of the reference photo, actually. I think it, I think on the whole, it's, it isn't too bad. But let's extend the body out this way. And let's uh, put another leg that's 
it's really it's, you know, it's a really odd angle we've got here um hang on a second let's uh, let's see if we can save save the situation oh i see what i've done wrong okay so this needs to come back here way way more of an angle it really yeah the, the photograph has been taken at quite an odd angle so that needs to rear leg needs to come down here a little more there we go and now this other front leg is more or less hidden but I, I want to kind of include it so that it's not the animal doesn't look too odd basically i mean i want it to look a little bit odd because uh because of the surreal aspect but okay well it's not quite what i intended but it'll, i think it'll work out okay so now having done that i'm going to put in just from you know imagination going to put in a little band of white here for the belt of galloway aspect and then i want to put um another animal here and then possibly one out on the water now the second animal i'm going to put down here on the shoreline and by the time if i use kind of you know a reference to some of the people i've done in sketches or just general observation uh over the years then by the time an animal of this size was down here it's going to be you know only about this kind of high all right so it's only only going to be from there to there and that's going to help me create a, a sense of depth i hope so i'm going to treat this one fairly simply a little silhouette so there are the hind quarters here and then the rear legs, underside of the body, and then there's the white band going around the midriff. And obviously, I'm going to fill all this in with with paint in a little bit. There are the four legs. We'll keep those together so it keeps the silhouette fairly simple. An ear, head, top of the head rather lines of the face and then a little block for the for the nose and that uh, again not perfect but I'll tweak it in a moment so there's my second animal so we've got a little bit of distance coming in and that will become more apparent when I paint paint this one in and then what I actually want to do is put another animal out on the water actually just kind of standing on the water which is kind of a weird thing to do but you know again it's about being surreal so let's have a go at that So we've got one, two, and then I want a third one off in the distance, but I don't want just a simple straight line. I want to go one, two, and then out over here somewhere. So it's a little bit more over to the left. So again, I'm just going to make the, the animal very small. And put in a little silhouette here. Still using the same peacock blue. I'm just putting a little gap in that silhouette so that the underlying blue that I've got there already will act as the the white stripe and there's my third animal so now I'm not sure how well you can oh you can probably see that okay um, so it's just a little hint off in the very distance there and that blue I quite like I probably might just leave it like that so I'm actually going to fill in this second guy with the same marker um, so these markers have got both a fine tip and a brush tip. Um, I'm just going to keep going with the, the fine tip. So simply filling in the drawing that I've put down already. Now, obviously, belted Galloway cattle are not are not peacock blue, but there's often a hint of blue reflected in their in their fur in their coats. Um, 
and, and the blue is going to help create a sense of distance as well. So that's going to be helpful. Now, I may go a little bit darker on, on this one, but I certainly need to put a little flash of, of white on the back there. We'll see. But this is the main animal that obviously needs further treatment. Now, if you remember from the footage from the beach, the the light is, for the most part, coming in from kind of top left and you know, beaming down to bottom right. And fortunately, in my reference, that's pretty much the same direction as the light falling on this main animal here. So I'm going to try and replicate that in kind of a, you know, a surreal artistic license way. So I'm just grabbing my, uh, so I've got my watercolour palette here, rather messy. Big mop brush again. So because the, the animal, the steer, is pretty dark, just kind of grabbing whatever happens to be in this central well. And then a little bit of ultramarine blue and some alizarin crimson. Because I've got this dark, you know, perhaps could have done with, in a conventional painting, this could do with being a bit of a lighter colour perhaps. But nevertheless, I've got this dark purple here for the cliff. So what I want to do is mimic that a little bit or echo it in the colour I use on the on the animal. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of um, neutral tint as well. And let's start to I may I may end up using acrylic over the top of this. We'll we'll see how it goes. I'm certainly going to use a little flash of acrylic on the top of the back there, but um, I want to take that out all the way to the edge of the painting, or the edge of the paper. Working with the paper flat as I was for the, the drawings of the animals that I just did. And, you know, it's really kind of a loosey-goosey uh, approach, but... What I'm going to do is imagine there's a cast shadow from this leg going off that way. OK, so that is also extending out beyond the edge of the painting. Wandered, out, wandered a little astray from my drawing there, but I don't mind too much. Um, and now my signature's there. I don't mind if I go over that. And what I'm going to do... Put another cast shadow going out that way. Notice I haven't put any paint on the on the hoof there. Is it a hoof or a, yeah, it's a hoof, I think. Um, and then put another cast shadow there from that other leg. And then we'll come in here, fill this in, and get some fairly dark tone on the head as well. OK, now while that's still damp, let's grab a little more of the neutral tint. Some of the alizarin. Some of the blue. But I've got rather less water in the mix now. I haven't put my paintbrush back in the back in the water at all. And let's add some shadows. So I'm, I'm very loosely looking at my reference, but for the most part, I'm just imagining what would be going on, because as I said, the light's coming in from top left. So this is going to be dark down here. This ear is going to be darker and the side of the head is going to be darker, perhaps a little bit of shadow there. A bit more shadow on that ear and then we'll just put a, couple, a little bit of an indication of a, a couple of nostrils there grabbing a little bit of the neutral tint and 
we will put an eye, same big brush. There and just try and leave a little bit of a gap for the for the light in the eye, but that, that didn't work. Well, the, the position of the eye is not too bad, but um, I, I need to could do with being a little bit lower, perhaps. Let's just let's smudge that out. Put in a bit more. Dark shadow. I went a bit darker there, there than I really wanted to. So let's um, just dump my brush in the in the water. I'm just going to lift off some of that with the paper towel. And with a clean, wet brush, just kind of move that round a bit more. And I'm going to come back in with my Alizarin Crimson, my blue. Get a bit more on the palette here. There we go. Get a bit more of that crimson. Back to something similar to what I had before. I'm just going to put a little bit of shadow down on that side of the belly as well. And just with a clean brush, I'm just going to lift out a little bit of paint there. I'm going to let that dry now and then we'll come back and do a bit more on that animal. But while that animal is drying, what I can do is start to just gently move around some of the, the watercolour marker on this second animal. So it's just, you know, damp brush, basically. And again, I'll just kind of hint some kind of shadow. Perhaps that needs to be a little bit darker. I don't want to go too dark. A little bit of a cast shadow to anchor that animal to the ground. And then obviously this distant cow or cat or steer is standing out on the water. So, you know, what on earth is going on there? Um, so I don't want to do too much detail, but just kind of hint at. Just put a little touch of. Colour there. Just hint at some kind of reflection. It's very, very minor. Now, while that's still drying out, what we can do is add a little bit of um, just a little bit of texture here with the smaller round brush. So obviously, this is still the, the watercolour. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is grab, put in a, a flash of highlight across the top of the back there. So I'm coming in with my Atelier Interactive Acrylics and a, a rigger brush here. Just going straight into the tube. And 
you know, no, no water involved here at all. But I just want to introduce some of that kind of shaggy texture that we get on the, the back of belted galloways and also just kind of block out that underlying light brown wash from the original beach painting. Now if some of the some of the drawing shows through I don't mind that's all right. Carry that some of that down a little bit further across the back just so that it looks kind of it's all one thing. And actually I can just put a little flash of white here. And even, even there as well. And perhaps uh, just a little bit on the top of the head, top, top of the ear as well, perhaps a little bit here. Well, this main animal is almost dry now, so let's have another go at the eye. So I've still got my little uh, rigger here, but I'm back on the watercolour now. And uh, it's pretty much just neutral tint on the brush. Uh, that worked out a, a little better, perhaps it looks a little bit sinister at the moment, but um, we can adjust for that in, in due course. Let's hint at the, the other eye over there, darken this nostril again, and this one here. And then I think what I'm going to do is get a flat brush and put in a little bit of dry brush texture. Uh, now this flat brush is actually a brush I use uh, normally for my acrylics, but um, it's a little bit frayed, it's a little bit beat up. So I've just grabbed some of the alizarin, a little bit of the ultramarine blue. And let's see what that looks like when I add a little bit of texture to the situation. So again, these animals have got a fairly shaggy coat. So I've got to be, I need to try and kind of simulate the, uh, the belted Galloway cow look, even though I don't actually have a reference of a belty in front of me, or at least not, not one in this, uh, In this position. Keep that theme of little frayed edges going on other parts of the animal. And then, although the leg isn't depicted here, I think I need to kind of hint at it. So I'm, sti I'm sticking with the same flat brush and I'm just going to kind of wash in a kind of a hint of a leg there. Um, now, in terms of the cast shadow, I don't think even, you know, it might not be exactly right, but I don't think I want to do any more on that. And now the question is, do I want to go any darker on the shadow regions of this main animal? 
and I, th I think I do. Um, I've gone back to my small round. And, you know, the at the moment, I don't feel there's enough of a distinction between the main body of the animal and the white stripe around the belly uh, in terms of tone. So let's uh, let's try and improve that situation. So this is the neutral tint. Oh, these are in crimson, ultramarine blue, but uh, a little bit more of the neutral tint this time. And the thing is with watercolour, when I'm you know, working in the traditional transparent way, obviously you've often got to do more than a couple of washes to get some real depth of tone. If you're, if you're doing it in terms of working in thin layers at least. So I'll perhaps darken this bit of shadow here. leaving a little bit of the underlying wash exposed around the eye because cows often do have um, a little bit of lighter skin showing just around the, the eye there. We can use just the tip of the brush to put a few, few little squiggly bits in. Darken this area up here a bit. And then let's let that dry again and we'll see where we are. Well, this is starting to dry out quite nicely. I'm quite happy with the way that's looking, but I just want a bit of warmth on the shadow of the white stripe there, a little bit of different part of uh, the temperature scale. So I'm just grabbing, well, it's going to be a little bit greeny. Uh, let me just show you. I've got some dried out um, cad yellow there. So let's, um, so again, belties do often have a little bit of an off yellow in their coats. On the, especially on the white striped bit. So that's, that's actually working okay for the kind of the shadowy area that's that's helped quite a lot um now of course you know the, the colors I'm, I'm using here i mean nothing's exactly accurate in the entire painting so that kind of gives me a little bit of leeway to to explore and let's put a little touch of that down here as well just to solidify that foot a little bit I think that's perhaps a little heavy on the foot, so I'm going to just come in with a clean brush and some water and just lift off some of that. Get in there with the old damp fingertip as well. That's a bit better. This one I'm not quite so worried about, but we'll smudge that out and then let's just soften some of this.
just so that the marks aren't I don't mind a few of the marks showing but um, I don't want it to be too too illustrative and then we'll come back in with just a few licks of that same Right, I think I'm going to let that dry completely now. Um, but having said that, I think the way the angle I've drawn the, the head and the snout here is slightly different to my reference. And I think I just need a little, little indication of the lower, lower lip there. And I think... Uh, That's going to work a bit better just to define the the shape and then these uh, the bit of yellow i put on still seems to be glowing at me rather so i'm just coming in with a light wash of of burnt umber just to tone that down a bit And then perhaps we'll come in with our more general shadow colour. When that dries, I think that's going to be better than it was. OK. Now, is there anything else I need? Yeah, I think looking here, I think this needs to be a little darker still. Just sweep some of that up with the side of the brush. And then we'll grab again a little bit of this light. Wash colour. I picked up a little bit of the acrylic there, the acrylic white, which is still drying, which I didn't mean to. But I think that's improved things. So Let's just soften the boundary there. And then just a couple of licks of shadow. In amongst the pure white. So here's a look at the finished painting. So you can see we've got lots of weird and wild texture and colour going on in the cliff. And then that's carried through, but with a, a lighter touch to the distant buildings and the, the foliage on the hillside. The water is given a very simple treatment, but whoops, sorry about that. Um, very simple treatment. I've got, I've got this lovely kind of blooming cloud effect occurring in the water. And then this tiny little very simple distant belted galloway and then we come over to the shoreline and we've got another one here rendered in a little bit more detail a little bit of a cast shadow and then as we pull back to the foreground where i've got these um you know auto mixing effects very light wash using the watercolor then i've got the main animal kind of bursting in from the side of frame and the cast shadow coming out of the the frame to give us the finished painting so i hope you enjoyed you know watching the creation of, the, of possibly the weirdest painting i've ever created i plan on doing more surreal stuff with belted galloways uh, in the future hope you enjoyed this video please remember to like comment and subscribe and i hope to see you next sunday for the next episode of the sunday art show thanks very much for watching